Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. Just recently, during one of my live streams, I decided to show you guys that, yeah, even with two slightly different printers, you can arrive at pretty much, well, as close as you can possibly get matching prints. And for that type of experiment, you really need to use a control image. Of course, the evaluation image that I have on my Facebook group that you all, if you join and get approved, can download for free. So what I needed to do was use a paper. Let's make things a little bit difficult here for me. I used a paper that's not intended to be used on Epson printers, and that was a paper by A sub, A dash sub, sub as in sublimation. Mainly this company creates and sells sublimation transfer paper which is another type of photo printing. It uses the sublimation and heat presses and all of that. But anyway, they decided to get into the photographic side of things. In other words, regular inkjet photo media. And they have two available types. One is glossy and one is luster. And the glossy looks suspiciously like Canon platinum gloss, extremely glossy, nice, hefty weight to it it's just gorgeous so i thought okay let's do things that are possibly not going to work i'm going to use an xp 15000 from epson that i am refilling with precision color signature edition inks right there i'm using a third party paper and of course third party inks but let's go ahead and create a profile using that ace of glossy paper and then we'll use that profile through Q image to print the standard image. Let's go ahead and try that. And then later on, I'm going to show you an extra one that worked out to be quite amazing. And it was because I had to do something for my wife's school that she worked for. And I needed to get a certain printer up and running. All right, so let's show you first. I should flip this upside down Put it over here. We'll show you the first two prints. And I don't know whether you can see here that they are pretty much as close a match as you can get. Now, we'll look at the back. Both are A sub. I have a horrible scribble. A sub XP15000 PC, meaning PC inks. A sub EcoTank 8550 OEM inks. So we're looking for differences in color rendition. And there should be a slight difference. There are two different printers that use different inks. Let's look at the red strawberries. This is, by the way, I made a claim a while ago that this is probably the best rendition of this image I have ever been able to get. That was on a sub paper. If you're interested, I have a link to that on my Amazon affiliate links. You can actually go in there and look for it. Just go into the uh, page and search for a sub photo paper and you will find this. It is wonderful. So we're looking at the red strawberries and they are pretty much identical. Maybe they differ a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, but I really cannot tell very quickly or easily that there is a difference. We're gonna look at the grays and they both appear to be very, very, very close match. I'm looking at the linearity of the tonalities. And again, it's just beautifully smooth. There's no changes. Now, here's where you might get slight differences in rendition. This row up here is out of gamut. It cannot be printed by any printer. Same here. And they pretty much look the same. We look at the kids' faces. And we're looking at the skin tones to make sure that they are not basically leaning toward some other color. And everything seems to be honky-dory, as they say. Everything seems to be correct. I'm looking at the last, the just under white. White being just paper. 
no ink and I could see a 254 that's crazy the same thing here I could see a 254 and the background is just pure paper white so the monochrome in the middle it looks pretty much a match let's look at the upper photographs and again the yellows are not changing between the two renditions I'm looking at the transitions of the sky from top to bottom it's smooth the static images here they look pretty much identical look at the transitions these are difficult to print by the way and they look smooth they look as smooth as I would wish them to be so again that just means that regardless of which printer I'm using I'm able to print perfectly good transitions smooth transitions equates to smooth tonality changes on your prints especially on a large gamut type photo paper such as this the glossier and smoother the surface is the more it can capture whatever gamut your image contained uh, you lose that when some of the less reflective type papers such as matte papers or papers that utilize a very high texture coating on it so as far as I know this looks to be a match and it's only because both situations XP 15,000 and 8550 we created profiles for these papers and those inks and those printers and the results are pretty much spot on the same now this brings a big question oh yeah so what you're telling me Jose is that the XP 15,000 which cost $350 it's outputting identical results as the almost $800 8550 yeah it is but you need to meet these conditions you have to have custom profiles for both so again this is that's today's topic what printer should I buy now let me show you what I just did on my P800 that I had not used for one year I had a roll of paper installed and I didn't want to wind it back up so that I could run nozzle checks so all I did was we ran three short cleaning cycles and then I printed a sample image and it was great the only problem was it was a little bit reddish so I decided I better do a profile so I made a profile for it, and this is I think this might be some luster paper from eBay I don't even think it's an actual brand name so regardless I did the profile and this is what I got and as you can see it's a little curly because it's roll paper we're gonna compare it this is luster we'll compare it to one of these super glossy results yeah this cannot compete with that this is almost almost the same let's just say degree of contrast and pop but we're looking at neutrality and again it's, it's, it's pretty much a match these strawberries they do not have that level of pop you know why pigment inks okay this is dye based this is pigment inks of course this will last decades this will not okay under the same conditions but yeah and you can see here the outer gamma colors pretty much the same they're just not as bright as they are on the dye ink printer but the baby skin tones they are subdued to begin with they reproduce them perfectly exactly almost the same so again all it takes folks is a custom profile so we're talking about let's see what was the P800 selling for? Over a thousand dollars? I don't remember. Maybe under just like nine ninety nine or something when it was out originally. And let's see, this is my XP fifteen thousand right here. So we're talking three fifty compared to a thousand dollars. 
And I actually like the XP15000 better. You see what I mean? And I'm using OEM inks on that printer. I buy large format cartridges for the same type of family of printers, the sure color printers from Epson and I extract the ink and I use that ink to refill my cartridges, which are refillable types. I can do that because I have a special decoder board mounted on my motherboard, actually. That's another story. But anyway, it allows me to use whatever ink I choose to use. And in this case, I am using OEM. And you can see clearly, if you had to choose, you would choose this one. Although this is perfect. It just, this looks just a little bit just, mm, you know what I mean? So there you go. Yes, you can get pretty much identical results out of three different printers. If you just do it right, you need to have custom paper profiles made for each combination. And at the end, you will get pretty much identical results. All right. I hope that kind of uh, alleviates any of the mystery. People are always, always complaining about not being able to get this quality on this printer or this printer is producing great results and the other printer is producing a slight magenta cast. You're doing something wrong, literally. It's gotta be because it is just not possible. With the correct profile, the profile will correct any tendencies of a particular ink set to go one way or the other. It'll just bring everything back to the neutral level. That's what it's doing. It is neutralizing the results your printer might be putting out otherwise without that profile. That's why you spend the time and the money to create a custom profile. All right, enough of that. Thank you so much for hanging here with me. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And until the next time, happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.